We are continuing our discussion on ownership model in Rust programming language. In the last video, we saw the concept of move. In this video, we will see the concepts of clone and copy. So in the last video, we saw that if we have a string S1 and we have assigned it using string from, so this will allocate the memory on the heap and we do assign S1 to S2, then the ownership of this chunk of memory is transferred to S2 and now we can no longer use S1. So this was the picture if you remember. So initially S1 had a pointer, then the length 5 and capacity 5 and this pointer was pointing to a memory in heap which was holding the word hello. And when we did S2 equal to S1, then S2, uh, the stack data was copied. So this part of data was in the stack and this is in heap. And this was also pointing to the same memory in the heap. And this was no longer usable. So the ownership has been transferred from S1. So we can use S2 but not S1. So this was to avoid the problem of double delete because S1 is here and S2 is also in the same scope. So when this goes out of scope, it does not try to free the memory of S1 and S2 both, but only the owner, owner's memory will be freed. Uh, and uh, uh, just a note for C++ programmers, this concept of automatically clearing the memory when a variable goes out of scope is called RAII in C++ and it stands for Resource Acquisition Initialization. So this was the picture earlier when we do this kind of assignment and we called it move. Today we will see clone. If we want to do a deep copy, we want that S2 and S1 both have a separate memory, something like this. So S1 S1 is pointing to this memory, hello, and S2 is also pointing to the same memory but there is a different copy. So both are working. So if we want this then we need to do clone. So clone is used to deeply copy the heap data of the string, not just the stack data. So its syntax is like this. So earlier it was S2 equal to S1 for move. Here we need to do S2 equal to S1 dot clone. And now you can use both S1 and S2. And you can see that it's an expensive call because all the heap data is also cloned. So let's see this in the code. So this was our earlier code. And here we had assigned S1 to S2. And when we ran this, we saw that it gave error because we were here using S1 and if we comment out this line it should work fine because S2 is the owner and this S1 is coming from here before the assignment was done so now uh, instead of this let's let's do S2 equal to S1 dot clone And now if we print S2 and let's say we print S1 also, then it works because here both S1 and S2 have a different uh, copy of the same data in heap. So both are pointing to different memory locations. So that, that was it for clone. Now let's see another concept called copy. So we have also seen in the code example here that if we have these integers and we assign x to y then we were able to use x as well as y so here the, these data were automatically uh, copied because we knew the exact size of these variables at runtime at compile time so the copying uh, the stack data is very easy and quick so clone wouldn't do anything different here so for this 
types, uh, uh, the size is known and compile time. Now, Rust has a special annotation called copy trait that can place, that we can place on any types like integers that are stored on the stack. So, whatever type is stored on stack, we can place a copy trait on those. And if a type has copy trait, an older variable is still usable after assignment. So Rust won't let us annotate a type with copy trait if the type or any of its part has implemented the drop trait. So earlier we had seen that if we have a variable here, like uh, we had seen the example of a string, S1 was a string hello. And when it goes out of scope, Rust automatically calls drop method for us, which will claim the resources taken by this variable. So if we have some custom cleaning to do, we can define a drop trait. If we are defining uh, our own custom variable and we don't want it to be cleaned by a Rust, but we want some custom things to do when the drop is done, then we would define a drop trait for that and its syntax would be like so it's currently out of scope of what we have read so far so we need to do some uh, study the struct before doing this so we have a struct a and it has a data let's say of the same string type then we can define implement drop trait so imp drop for this class a and here we will define a drop function and do our custom things when the drop is called. Similarly, uh, if so, so if we define a drop trait for any variable and again we try to define a copy trait for that, then it will be a compile time error and we will not be allowed to do that. So this was just a heads of information on copy. So you can see how uh, we can do move and cop uh, and clone with uh, complex data types when we assign a value or clone a value. So we will continue our discussion on ownership model in Rust in the further videos. See you in the next video.